Ever go out to your car to get something only to realize you forgot your keys? Well, what if there was a way to unlock your car with just this trunk button? Don't, don't mind that guy. The GR86 is the newest car that I've ever owned and there's a ton of new technology and features built in, some of which most people probably aren't utilizing because you just don't know it exists. It's hidden in the mountain of text we call the owner's manual. Well, I've done the dirty work for you and save you the time from having to sift through all that. So today, we're gonna check out all the hidden features of the 22 GR86 and BRZ. Of course, I've got to start off by showing you how you can unlock your car using that trunk button. Maybe you're doing some sort of activity where you could very easily lose your keys or get them wet or damaged, like surfing or hiking or something like that. What you can actually do is lock your key in the car. I'll show you how to do that later. And then when you come back, you can enter in the pin code that you set up to unlock your car. So what you need to do to set it up is take your keys, press and hold the lock button. And once the car is locked, you're gonna press and hold the trunk button at the same time until you hear the car start beeping. Once it starts beeping, you're going to unlock it. And now you can enter in the five digit pin code. Each number needs to be entered in separately. So for example, if you're gonna enter in the number four, you're gonna press the button four times consecutively, wait for the car to beep, and then you can enter in the next number. To keep this simple, I'm just gonna go with one, two, one, two, one. So we're gonna press the button once, the car's gonna beep, and then we can, press, we can enter in the number two. So we'll press it twice, and then go through the sequence of numbers. And then at the end, it's gonna start beeping again and we need to confirm that code that we just entered. So just press that code in again. So one, two, one, two, and one. And if you did this correctly, you'll see those hazards come on to confirm that everything is set up properly. So now I'm gonna put these keys away and I'll come back to make sure that we did this right. All right, to enter in the code, same process as we did to set it up. So we'll start with the one. We're gonna listen for the beep. Two, one, two, and one. Voila, easy as that. If you're as forgetful as I am, chances are you're gonna forget that code later on down the road. Don't worry though, as long as you have your key, you're gonna be able to reset that code. The process is exactly the same as setting up a new code up until the point where you actually enter in the pin. When you go to enter it, you need to enter in all two. So five twos, once you do that, that is going to clear out the pin and then you can go through the whole process again to enter in a new pin. And it goes without saying, you obviously aren't gonna be able to use all twos as your pin. To lock your keys in the car and disable the smart key function that unlocks the car using the door handle, open up the driver's side door, press the lock switch forward, and then press and hold the lock and trunk key on your button for at least five seconds until you hear the car beep. Now, even if I toss the keys in the car with the doors locked, I can no longer utilize the handle to unlock the car. So you can either use that pin code that you entered or another set of keys to press the unlock button. Or in this case, I just took the physical key out of the key fob to unlock the door. To reactivate the smart key function, again, we'll open up the driver's side door, push that switch forward, and we'll do the same thing with the key. Press and hold the lock and trunk button for at least five seconds until the car beeps. And now with the car locked, you can use the handles to unlock the car again. Hopping inside the car, there are a bunch of different features and settings that you can tweak and adjust to your liking. But one of the most annoying things that I absolutely hate about this car has to be the seatbelt chime. Now, I'm not saying not to wear your seatbelt. You should always wear your seatbelt when you're out driving. But if you just put something in your passenger seat or you're just moving the car around the shop or working on it, it becomes incredibly annoying. It gets even louder and turns the music down if you don't buckle the seatbelt. Luckily, there's a way to turn that off. You're going to turn the ignition to the on position, so that's two clicks. And within 30 seconds of doing so, you're gonna take the seatbelt and insert it in and out of the buckle at least 20 times. So I'm gonna hold my finger on the red button and just click this in and out of the buckle I think that's at least 20 times. And now we no longer have to deal with that annoying seatbelt chime. 
If we go into the settings on the radio and go all the way over to the right under the car tab, we have access to all of these different settings. One thing that's really nice to change by default, when you unlock the door using the door handles on the driver's side, it only unlocks the door on the driver's side. So if you have a passenger, it becomes very inconvenient. You can actually change it so it unlocks both doors by hitting this keyless entry system and going to the bottom option and changing it to all. So now it will unlock both the doors. You can also change the audible signal or the hazards to turn those on and off with these toggles when you unlock and lock the car. And then going back to this menu, you can change the duration of the defogger, interior light, as well as the welcome lighting. And then you can change the sensitivity of uh, the auto light sensor and if it links to the wipers as well as the one touch lane changer. And then if we go back to the main menu here, you go into maintenance, you can also check out the maintenance schedule of the oil and the filter and tires and you can set all that up so that the car reminds you when you need to change your oil and oil filter and tires and such. On the cluster, if we go over to the settings, you can actually access most of the settings I just showed you in the car settings here. But if we go back and go to the screen settings, you can turn on and off the startup screen, as well as the gear select indicator, which will show you which gear you're in and give you an indication as to when to shift for the best gas mileage. And then if you go back or go down to the rev option here and click on that, this is where you can turn on and off the shift light or shift indicator. So I have it on right now and you can customize what RPM it's set at. So if we go into here and let's say we go down to 5,000 RPM, you can see that orange on the tack change to the certain RPM that you have it set to. So we're gonna go back to 7,000 RPM because that's where I wanna leave it at for now. And you can also turn on and off the buzzer, which is an audible uh, sound that'll come on once you reach that RPM so you know when to shift. Another thing you may have noticed inside the car is the fake engine noises. On the previous gen, we had the tube coming from the intake. This time around, we've got the active sound control instead. Luckily, there's an easy way to turn it off. Behind this plastic trim panel here is the control module, which we can unplug and you no longer have to deal with the fake noises. So take a plastic pry tool, pry on the bottom of the panel to pop it loose. And usually you can access that metal box that says active sound control through this gap here and unplug it. Uh, there's not really a good angle for me to show you this, so I'm gonna take the dash kind of apart to give you a better look, but you shouldn't have to take the dash apart to do this. Also, I've already taken out the screws in the dash, which is why it's so easy to pull out. Don't just go pulling your dash out by watching this video because you're probably gonna break some stuff. So that's the metal box that I was talking about that says active sound control on the sticker. We're gonna just unplug this, plugs at the bottom, and now we can put this back together and we're all set. If you're worried about unplugging things in your car, you can actually take it to the dealership and just have them turn it off. I absolutely despise having the dealer work on any of my cars. So if I could do it myself, that's the route I'm gonna take, but completely up to you. There's a couple things to show you underneath the dash on the passenger side. If you just open up the glove box, you'll have access to this 12 volt cigarette lighter plug on the right side. And then on the left side, you have your TPMS sensor button. This is going to reset your TPMS sensors or you can toggle to another set. This car can store up to two sets of wheels so you can run summers and winters, which is usually uh, the setup. Also behind the glove box, as, I've, as you can see, I've taken it off. You have your cabin air filter. Make sure you're changing this out on a regular basis as well. Uh, most people go, I don't know how long before changing it. It's super easy. You just take out your glove box, open that cover, and then this just slides out. So don't forget to change that out ever so often. Another thing that can be kind of a hassle with this car, especially if you're working on it a lot, is the hood prop. Especially if you're doing something over on the passenger side, it just kind of gets in the way and the hood doesn't actually open up all that much. What you can do is take the hood prop and spin it out of the location that it's currently in. And now if you look on the corner of the strut tower here, there's a hole that you can insert the hood prop into. And then there's also a hole on the hood that's the same shape as the hole that you would normally use. And you'll insert the hood prop into that hole 
and it kind of moves the hood prop out of the way and opens up the hood a whole lot more so you're free to work on the engine bay. That is gonna do it for today, guys. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know what other videos you'd like to see down in the comments section. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Fucker just left me in here. Ugh!